Hello and welcome to part three of Accounting for Stockholders' Equity. Watching this video will help prepare you for class. It is important that you view this before class so we can learn more together in class. This video will walk you through how to account for the retirement of stock and dividends. After watching this video, you will be able to make the journal entries to record the retirement of common stock and treasury stock. You will also be able to record cash and common stock dividends. A company can purchase and immediately retire their own common stock if they do not want the stock to be issued again. This cancels the common stock shares and it is as if the shares never existed. Common stock and paid in capital that were recorded when the shares were issued is removed. The first step is to reduce cash by the amount paid to purchase common stock. The second step is to remove common stock at the par value. The third step is to reduce paid in capital at the average amount received when common stock was issued. Average paid in capital is a calculated amount. Treasury stock can also be retired. Follow the same steps and replace cash paid with a reduction to treasury stock at the historical cost. The journal entry will not be in balance. A credit to balance the entry is recorded to paid in capital. A debit to balance the entry is recorded to retained earnings. Here is an example of the purchase and immediate retirement of common stock. The company has 100,000 shares issued and outstanding with a 10 cent par common stock. 2,000 shares were purchased from investors for the purpose of retiring the shares. The first step is to reduce cash by the 19,000. This comes from 2,000 shares times 9.50 a share. The second step is to reduce the common stock for the par value of the 2,000 shares, 2,000 times 10 cents. The third step is to compute the average paid in capital per share. Average paid in capital is computed as total paid in capital divided by the number of shares currently issued. The average pay per share is multiplied by the number of shares retired to determine the amount to debit to paid in capital. The entry will not balance. Record a credit to paid in capital or a debit to retained earnings to balance the entry. A dividend is a distribution to shareholders. A company can distribute cash or additional shares of stock. We will begin by discussing cash dividends. All dividends must be declared by the board of directors. Preferred shares are purchased with the expectation that a dividend will be paid. However, the company is not obligated for the dividend until the board declares it. Preferred shares are either cumulative or non-cumulative. Cumulative means if the dividend is not declared this period, it can be declared and paid in future periods. Non-cumulative means if the dividend is not declared in the current period, it cannot be made up or paid in the future. Dividends in arrears are cumulative dividends that were not declared to preferred shareholders. They must be declared before dividends are declared for common shareholders. There are three dates associated with dividends. First, the board declares the dividend. Dividends always reduce retained earnings. A liability is initially recorded. The second date is the record date. Shareholders that own the stock on the record date will receive the dividend. This date is used only to determine the names of shareholders that will receive the dividend. The third date is the pay date the date the cash dividend will be paid or the stock dividend will be issued. Retained earnings is decreased for the amount of cash to be paid to shareholders when a company declares a cash dividend. There has been much debate over the amount that should reduce retained earnings when a stock dividend is declared. The two options are par value or fair market value. Using par value is a very small reduction to retained earnings. Using fair market value better represents the value given to investors. The reduction to retained earnings depends on how large the dividend is. A stock dividend is always stated as a percent. This percent is the percent of total currently issued shares that will be issued to shareholders. 
a large dividend, greater than 25%, is recorded to retained earnings at par. A small dividend, less than 25%, is recorded to retained earnings at fair market value. Recording a stock dividend does not change total shareholders' equity. Recording a stock dividend just moves amounts out of one stockholder's equity account into other stockholders' equity accounts. Let's take a look at an example of a large stock dividend. This company has 200,000 shares of $1 par stock issued just prior to declaring the dividend. A 30% stock dividend means that 30% more shares, or 60,000 shares, will be issued. A large stock dividend records retained earnings at par times the number of shares to be issued. Common stock is always recorded at par. No paid in capital is needed to balance the journal entry. Now let's take a look at an example of a small stock dividend. The company has 200,000 shares of $1 par stock that was issued just prior to declaring the dividend. A 10% stock dividend means that 10% more shares, or 20,000 shares, will be issued. A small stock dividend records retained earnings at fair market value times the number of shares to be issued. Common stock is always recorded at par. The difference is recorded to paid in capital common stock. After viewing this video, you should be able to record the retirement of common stock, which also means that you can compute the average paid in capital or retire treasury stock. You should also be able to record the declaration and payment of preferred stock cash dividends and common stock cash or stock dividends. This concludes our discussion of accounting for stockholders' equity. Please fill in the blanks on the stockholders' equity pages in your course pack and work through the practices you learn problems related to the retirement of stock and dividends. Thank you for taking the time to prepare for class. It is very much appreciated.